What can I say? It's December the 24th and Drapers have just handed me an Umarex Underlever to review. It may be Christmas 2018, but right now it feels like all my Christmases have come at once. Time to break out the Western music, methinks. The following program does not contain firearms, hunting, violence or cruelty to animals. All guns shown are compressed air in spring, CO2 or pre-charge forms and are not gunpowder based. The program is aimed at being informative, entertaining and above all promoting safety. The following people make up the production team and give up their time for free. And welcome to AAR On Air, partners. Well, that's quite enough of that. Hello, y'all. It must be said that one of my favourite replica base guns has to be the Winchester Underlever style rifles. And Umarex have made a terrific job when they produced this. How could they possibly um, improve on it? Eight shots firing pellets with that realistic cocking action and pretty good accuracy up to about 30 yards plus. Well, it seems the guys at Umrex have been working their magic again. They have kept all the feel and realism of the original replica and made it even better. Let's take a closer look and I'll keep the original alongside to show you the differences. Whilst it is very similar, there are some subtle differences. Naturally, the finish is different to the Wells Fargo version that I own, but there are other finishes available anyway. As always, I will start from the front. The barrel is thinner on the new one, and it has open sights only rather than the option for a loop over. That said, there is a really nice gold finish to the new one which aids sighting. The barrel straps are metal rather than plastic as is the rear sight which is height adjustable but no wind adjustment. Just under the sight is a rather spoiling white letter stating cowboy rifle. This would just have to go on one I would own. The wood of the forestock and indeed the rear butt end is a rather nice dark wood finish. Actually, it isn't wood at all. But it must be said you have to look very closely indeed to find out it isn't wood. This is probably the best faux wood finish I have seen on any gun so far. It fools people even very close up. The main business part is a beautiful antique metal finish and looks about as real as you're going to get this side of the real thing, I think. Behind the hammer is a shotgun style safety, which is so easy to use and simple to see. When in safe mode, it locks everything up tighter than John Wayne's jailhouse. Comparing the two side by side, the rear stock seems more realistic in its size and simplicity. It doesn't have such a huge butt pad as the original, which was holding 88 grams CO2 inside. No such expense on the new one, it holds two 12 gram CO2s back to back, saving on the high cost of the larger gas canisters and also helping with the weight too. Loading the CO2s is a pretty simple task, so here goes. There is a press and twist on the back, removing the butt shows a hex key that you pop in twist and it's quite a long thread on this
Once you've got that piece out, which is a rather odd looking thing, it is then two CO2s popped in, face in, face out, and then it's just a case of retightening. As I said, it does seem to go a heck of a long thread on it, but it can be speeded up pretty easily. Once that's in, pop the butt piece back and return that. Simple. The underlever mechanism is pretty much identical in looks and action. But flip them over and the main difference becomes apparent. Now I was very impressed at the way Umrex adapted the original to take an eight round rotary standard magazine by a pop out tray which ejected itself by depressing the loading port. Then they brought out the new one. And the R&D guys at Umrex really work their magic. This one is 10 rounds and actually takes the shells that you take straight from your Umrex Colt SAA replica pistols and load as per the genuine Winchester rifle. The loading port on this one is the genuine McCoy. They load after one another until you've got 10 shells preloaded with BBs in the back. Now 10 shells are provided in the box but you are going to want more of these without a doubt. Once all 10 are loaded then the fun begins. By operating the underlever, the first of the ten is loaded in place behind the barrel, ready for firing. Once fired, reload with the underlever and it ejects the spent shell, bringing the other one back in place, as per the genuine article. The satisfying bit without a doubt is how the cartridge ejects itself skyward and the next shell is lifted then into place and the fun keeps going until all 10 are spent and all over the floor. Heck, you don't even care if you hit anything. The action alone is reason enough to buy this gun. Anyway, enough gushing over this. What about the power output? as if I really care. Well, using standard steel 5.37 grain BBs, I saw a maximum of 525 feet per second, but an average of 610 feet per second, which is 4.44 foot pounds or 6.02 joules on a cold December day. I also tried the dust devils and it happily fired them with an average of 595 feet per second which was 3.6 foot pounds or 4.87 joules. Again this is due to the odd shape of the dust devils in the barrel. So far so good, but BBs? Nah. I prefer the less susceptible to ricocheting pellets. So what the hell, I put 7.33 grain JSBs in. A little hesitantly at first in case I cost drapers a rifle or at least a repair job. No such worry needed. It fired them no problem. It obtained 551 feet per second which is 4.96 foot pounds or 6.73 joules. Well if it fired lead pellets what about alloy ones? Out with the 5.56 grain alloy then. 601 feet per second was seen on the chrono, giving 4.46 foot pounds or 6.05 joules. Well, I consider that pretty good testing and tests of different fuels, resulting in that all important finding. This is quite happy with pellets. Result. Target time then. Let's take a look out at 10 metres only, I'm afraid, using the recommended and stated steel BBs first.
Not bad, but I'm not finishing there. Time to break out the 8.44 grain JSB pellets for good measure. Same distance, just for comparison purposes. Pretty much all touching when using pellets. So, I know what I would use. It really needed pushing out to greater distances, but the weather meant no outdoor shooting, I'm afraid, on this occasion. Still, point proven. What about downsides? Well, I'm not really the person to talk about that. If I were to be super critical, it would be a couple of things, apart from the lower power output. But this is only suitable for fun plinking, and most definitely not for any form of pest control, really. So power, not a major issue. The issue I had was with the action. It does seem to tear up some of the shells, certainly the rubber on the back, and sometimes decides to jam up a little. You needed to get the cocking action of the gun just right to stop that jamming. But after saying that, this is the only one I've tried so far and could simply need a slight adjustment somewhere along the way. I will no doubt try some more when next I'm in Drapers. Conclusion, if you like this sort of thing, buy it. I'm not sure how much it is because I just got this so quickly and the website at Drapers is being updated. So I couldn't even check it out on the online over the Christmas holiday. But I believe it is less expensive than the original. And by a fair amount too. It's great fun to use. It feels terrific. You will spend most of your time searching for spent shells all over the floor. So buy loads. You will either start drinking beer to get the tins to shoot or looking online for cowboy costumes to match it up with it. Me, I just love the ownership of something that has been so well engineered. The Legends team at Umrex have done themselves proud. Now all that they need to do is incorporate this action into a Glock pistol and they will completely corner the market. Thanks for watching.